Over the past 35 seasons, there have only been four NFL teams who dropped to 0-3 and still made the playoffs, and it's because of that that there are several prominent ESPN writers saying that if the Denver Broncos do indeed lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday, that there are several current Denver Broncos starters who will be on the trading block or the chopping block altogether. Uh, we're going to break down who those players are, what we'd get in return for them, and why I still think we actually have a ton of hope to win this game on Sunday. And man, just for my mental health, for my birthday weekend, we need the Broncos to come up big. Uh, if you like the Denver Broncos, helps me out a ton. If you would also like this video and subscribe, Subscribe to the content. It helps uh, the YouTube algorithm. So let us dive in. Um, so, but before we, we dive in and, and look at that, and this will just be really quick, like hop in your hot tub time machine. Um, or if you're like older than that, hop in the DeLorean and let's go back to even just last year. Do you remember when the Denver Broncos were 0-3 and, and every single person around the NFL was talking about how Sean Payton was tanking for Caleb Williams and they're resurfacing old clips of him when he was at Fox saying like, look, Sean Payton's not even trying right now. And then we go on and shock the NFL and truly are in a playoff position up until that nightmare before Christmas Eve game in New England. So I would just put a giant pin in this and just say, we have not seen the best of this Broncos team yet. We have truly been in one score games playing D minus games. And so if we put out a B effort on offense, we are going to beat the Bucs. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But if the Broncos lose, I think Sean Payton's only chance of salvaging his job after how much he hyped up this team all offseason is to sh uh, start shipping out parts and rebuilding. And then his hope is like you convince the Walter Penner ownership group that you've been part of this rebuild and like, oh, you didn't win that many games because look at all the dudes you sent out. And so we had an article written here that's called like the way too early um, trade deadline. Um um, article and what it's doing is it's just saying like, Hey, here's some teams who either have a guy who's like on the outs. Hassan Reddick still has held out and not shown up, which is why it's so great that we ended up getting John Franklin Meyer who will be playing on Sunday, which is a great piece of news. Uh, the, the giants are totally done for, and they will probably end up with Shadur Sanders in the draft. But here is who they are predicting that we si uh, send out. And that is our starting nose tackle DJ Jones, uh, incredible defensive lineman. We signed him to a three-year deal and we're paying him quite a bit. So we would save some cap room there. Um, and they're saying that we would send him out to the Chicago bears or perhaps the Eagles, Cowboys, or the Bengals, or even the San Francisco 49ers. So I think because of how much, uh, we've seen Zach Allen come on, how um, incredible John Franklin Meyer has been. This is not the worst move, the player to move on from. Um, but I also feel like we have seen just with this injury with Browning and with the concussion of John Franklin Meyer, that if we are going to make a push for the playoffs, that losing depth at defensive tackle is not a, a thing that we want to start doing. And so I hope we are not even thinking about sending DJ Jones out. Um, he hasn't had like those uh, Aaron Donald type moments, but I feel like he's been very consistent and look at our defense right now. You guys like even losing the time of possession, our defense barely let the Steelers move the ball the entire second half. And that's the team everyone's talking about winning their division. And so our defense is great. Let's not mess with it. And I, I get that Sean Payton might want to start hedging his bets and sending guys out of here so that he has a built in excuse. But I really hope that we don't do this. Let me know in the comments. How would you feel about the Broncos shipping out DJ Jones? What would you want in return for him? Like, obviously, if the Chicago Bears are like, We'll give you a first for DJ Jones. That's way too high of an asking price knowing where he's at in his contract. Um, but I guess depending on what the package is, um, that might be something I, I could be persuaded on. So let me know in the comments what you would want for him and how you would feel about sending him out. The next one that I think is really interesting um, is shipping out Zach Wilson. We have seen Justin Herbert be um, deactivated already for Sunday, knowing that the Chargers have really bad backups uh, behind him. We've seen Tua Tagovailoa probably out for at least the next four weeks on IR, but perhaps is he done altogether? Uh, we've seen there's not a ton of backup uh, for Jared Goff or um, Matt Stafford in the Rams. And so there are a lot of people saying that the Denver Broncos would ship out Zach Wilson. And as far as I'm concerned, I would be okay with this as long as we end up with a, a fourth round pick for him. We were able to get him for a late, right, like a seventh round pick. So if we could end up getting some assets for him, I would be cool with that because 
I think this year it's Bo or nothing. We'll see what we have in Bo. And if Bo does not work out, then the, the Broncos will be picking high next year. I still believe and think he's going to be good. But at this point, um, holding Zach Wilson, knowing that next year he has to get a new contract, are the Broncos going to pay him big time? No, we're either going to have Bo Nix as our, our starter and we want a more veteran backup like a Jarrett Stidham, or we're going to draft high in the draft and, and pick the quarterback of the future. But like I said, I think that's... Um, I think that is indeed Bo Chapman Nix. Other person uh, on this list is Cortland Sutton. I That is the pick that, although we might actually end up getting the most for Cortland Sutton, this year to me is all about what do we have in Bo Nix. And by sending out Cortland Sutton, shipping out a wide receiver one, you really don't know how you can even evaluate the quarterback position if he doesn't have guys to throw to. So let me know uh, in the comments of those three trades, Sutton, Zach Wilson, DJ Jones, which one would you be the most okay with and which one are you like? No, definitely do not do that. Uh, next thing coming up here is as we are going to play in Tampa Bay, early game, 11 o'clock game, make sure you're student, uh, tuned in here. We are going to be doing a post game, um, probably starting at the two minute warning, maybe a little bit earlier if I'm feeling hyped and I'd love to break it down and hear what y'all think. Uh, one of the positions I'm really going to be keeping my eye on is on defense. I feel very good that we're going to be able to stop the run and we're going to make Baker Mayfield throw the ball. Yet he has one of the uh, best statistical uh, connections with Chris Godwin. And if you take a look at the EPA, when you're throwing at Chris Godwin, uh, it's just off the charts and it's better than any other quarterback receiver combo. And so going into this game at the start of the off season, I was like, you just put Pat Sertan on top of Mike Evans and shut him down. But now that I've seen how this offense is really clicking, I kind of am leaning towards putting Pat Sertan on Godwin and having him just follow him around and then trusting that you have Riley Moss and then some safety help. We've seen uh, the data just came in on how amazing PJ Locke has played and even Brandon Jones. So you just hope that the combination of those three guys on Evans can um, keep him locked down. The issue with Evans is that he is so much bigger than Riley Moss, but that's going to be something I'm keeping my eye on um, for sure. Uh, other thing I wanted to break down here, and, and again, why I think the Denver Broncos actually have a shot on Sunday, is that Sean Payton has been incredibly predictable in these play callings, so much so um, that we had a bunch of Steelers cornerbacks laughing and joking around and making fun of our rookie quarterback and our situation. And so you had a reporter from the Pittsburgh area say there, the Pittsburgh Steelers corners are sitting there laughing, saying we knew the playbook. We knew they weren't going to take any shots. We know what he likes to do. They're going to make it easy on him. And that's all we had to worry about. And when you combine that with looking at just how predictable uh, we were right here, that when we were under center, we are running the ball 78% of the time. You just got to know that Sean Payton is opening up the complexity of this, not necessarily the length of how long a play call is, but just like letting Bo truly cook. And I think we're going to start seeing that this week. There are so many examples throughout NFL history where rookie quarterbacks struggle and they just pick up more and more each week. And we already saw that from week one to two. If Bo Nix can take another jump, knowing that you are – Going against the Tampa Bay secondary without Winfield, they are not. They do not have Vita Vea on Sunday as well, and this is the perfect time to play against a banged up Tampa Bay defense that wasn't even close to being as good as Pittsburgh, even when they were fully healthy. So I think we have a legit ch uh, chance of beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday, redeeming my birthday weekend, and just giving us all something to bow leave in.